All right, so for this example, we have seven letters. We have A, 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 B, B, C. All right, and so if we arrange all of these and all the different permutations, there's going to be seven factorial possible combinations or permutations to look at. But many of these won't be distinguishable, right? So for instance, we could do the first A, the second A, and then everything stays the same afterwards. Or we can do the second A, then the first A, and then everything stays the same afterwards. All right. So these two are different permutations because I'm considering this one to be the first and that the second A. Then I just switch where the second and the first A were, but they're the same exact thing, even though they're different permutations. So that leads us to figuring out how to calculate the distinguished permutations. We'll come up and calculate that in a second. Um, but essentially, if you have n objects where n1 of them are of one type, n2 are of another type, and so on, so that n1 plus n2 plus n3 all the way up through nk is equal to n, then the number of distinguished permutations is going to be n factorial over n1 factorial times n2 factorial times up through n sub k factorial. All right, and so let's see what that means up here. We know that there's going to be a total of seven factorial permutations, but with the a's, there's four of them, and it doesn't matter which one is the first, second, third, or fourth. So we're going to get rid of that ambiguity there with a the four factorial. There's two b's, Right. And it doesn't matter if we choose the first B or the second B, it's going to give us the same thing, just like over here. And then there's only one C. So if we run this down, right, that's going to be 7 times 6 times 5 times then 4 factorial. Then the 4 factorial in the denominator, I'm going to write underneath there. Remember that 1 factorial is just 1. And then we have two times one from the two factorial. So if these cancel out, we're looking at seven times six times five divided by two, which tells us that there's only gonna be 105 distinguished permutations of A, 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 B, B, C. All right, most of them are going to look all the same. Um, so there's really only gonna be 105 different ones. And that leads us to this example here. In how many ways can you draw 10 different balls out of, or 10, draw a ball out of 10 different, um, out of 10 different balls out of an urn where four of the balls are red and six of them are green? So we know that there is going to be 10 factorial different ways of choosing um, the, the balls out of the urn, but you know, it doesn't matter if we choose a red or a different red. So we're going to cancel that out. And we're gonna have six green. And so, again, I'm only going to take the 10 factorial down to the six factorial part. So we have 10 times nine times eight times seven times six factorial. That's all over, again, the six factorial. And then the four factorial, I'm gonna write out as four times three times two times one. And just to play around with factorials, those cancel. We have four times two, which gives us eight. And then we have three, which divides nine. So I'm gonna knock that out and just keep track of what was left over. So we really only have 10 times three times seven, which gives us 210 possible ways of choosing um, these di 10 different balls out of the, this urn. And then for this next one, a teacher who scales grades um, plans on assigning three A's, four B's, four C's, three D's, and two E's to their class of 16 students. How many different ways can they assign these letter grades? So we know that we have 16 students total, and we know three A's are gonna be given out, <clears throat> four B's are gonna be given out, four C's are given out, three D's, 
and two e's. All right, so four, uh, three plus four gives us seven, plus another seven plus two gives us a total of 16. And what we'll do is write this out <clears throat> as much as possible. So again, since the largest number in the denominator is four factorial, we're gonna have to take 16 factorial all the way down until we get the four factorial. So that's gonna be 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. You get the idea here times four factorial, cool. So I'm gonna take the first four factorial and just write it down here. So that takes care of this. Now we have three factorial. So three times two times one. The other copy of four factorial, which is four times three times two times one. And this four factorial is over here, then another copy of three factorial and a two factorial. Right, and then we just start canceling out everything that we can. So the four factorials knock each other out. We have three times two times one, which is the same thing as six. So this six right here cancels with that whole thing here. Then we have um, four times two, which gives us eight. Um, we have three times two times two. So two times two times three gives us 12. And then we're left with just a three in the denominator and going around here, why don't we take a three out of that nine? All right, so all together we get 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 11 times 10 times three times five after we did all the canceling. And that's gonna give us a huge number. Five zero four five zero four zero zero zero. So there's five hundred four million five hundred four thousand or five hundred four thousand um, possible different combinations of handing out these grades in this specified order here. And then the next topic we're going to cover are combinations. So a combination. is a selection of R objects from a group of N objects. So similar to what we did over here with the distinguished permutations, um, except without regard to order. So order does not matter here. Right, and so that's how you're going to be able to tell the difference of when you're working with a combination where order doesn't matter and a permutation where order does matter. Um, and we denote this by NCR. The number of combinations of R objects selected from a group of N objects is going to be N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Right, and we'll see a couple examples here. An NBA team has 15 players on the roster that is our N. And we wanna know how many different starting lineups of five people, so we're looking to choose R of them. And it doesn't matter who we choose first, regardless, the starting lineup is still going to have just five people. So the order doesn't matter in which we choose them. And since the order doesn't matter, we're looking at a combination. So the N choose R, that's a five, sorry, is 15 choose five which gives us 15 factorial over five factorial times 15 minus five factorial. So that gives us 15 factorial. Again, always take care of the stuff in the parentheses first. And since 10 is the larger number in the denominator, we expand out the 15 factorial till we get to the 10 factorial. So that's 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 factorial all over five times four times three times two times one times 10 factorial, all right? So the 10 factorials knock each other out right away. And then we start digging into what can cancel out on top with on the bottom. And what I see is five times three gives us 15. 
Um, four goes into 12, which leaves us a three left over. And two goes into 14, leaving us with a seven. So altogether, there's going to be seven times 13 times three times 11 possible ways of doing this. And if we just throw that all together in a calculator, we get 3,003 possible five person starting lineups out of a team that has 15 players. Um, Jaden wants to choose a, a soccer team out of his 20 classmates and he can only choose seven players. So again, seven here is R, 20 here is N. So if we want to see how many different combinations he can choose, it's gonna be 20 C7, which gives us 20 factorial over seven factorial over 20 minus seven factorial, which gives us, again, parentheses first, 13 is the larger number in the denominator, so we expand out the 20 factorial until we get to 13 factorial. So it's 20 times 19 times 18, 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 factorial. All over. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 for the 7 factorial. And then 13 factorial over here. Those knock each other out. And again, we just start looking for things to cancel. So 14 is really just 2 times 7, which allows us to cancel that. We have, I guess, 5 times 4, which gives us 20. And then 6 times 3, which gives us 18. Right? And so we can perfectly cancel those out um, nice and easy. And we're going to be left with a 19 on top, 17, 16, and that's it. And after 15, sorry about that. So 19, 17 times 16 times 15 are all that's left in the numerator. So if we take that, there's going to be 77,520 different teams that Jaden can create by choosing seven of his classmates out of a class of 20 students.